so we are talking today about Wild Wild Country. Um, it's a TV. It's a not TV. It's a show. It's a series. Um, it's a kind of like five episodes. A doc. It's a documentary. Wild Wild Country, man. It's amazing. Please see it. Please watch it. And it's really really great. So it tells you about Rajneesh Puram, which is a movement. Um, you know, which is a commune that was set in Oregon. You probably heard of him, Osho. I, I know him as Osho because when I was studying philosophy in college, um, he was somebody that I read, that I listened to, and sorry, and I actually had his pictures on, in my dorm. And then um, later on, while I was leave, uh, living with my partner, Michael, uh, Michael introduced me to Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins, and I read uh, Christopher Hitchens in his book. Um, it's um, God is not great. Um, I read about R Bhagwan Rajneesh for the first time, and that Osha and him is the same person that he had twenty-two Rolls Royces, and that he basically uh, told you know, people, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, possess anything, you know, you should give up your possessions, and they gave up his, their possessions to him, but he kept it, so he had a lot of money, uh, I'm talking about millions of dollars, uh, started with thousands, ended up with millions, and she, uh, Ma Sheila Anand was his personal secretary, uh, basically, this woman did not even believe in meditation. You know, he was selling this kind of like meditation where they have to like, you know, violent meditation. They have to like express their anger. A lot of people broke their bones. I don't know if you call it cold. They were saying they're not cold. But anyway, it wasn't like a religious movement because they were registered under religious movement. They, they claimed they're not religion, but they were registered under religious movement so they can, so they don't have to pay taxes. And then eventually he proclaimed himself as a guru. Basically, this woman, um, Ma Sheila Nant, she, when she met him, she was 21. She fell in love with the man. She did not really, you know, yes, she was interested. She was looking for a meaning of life, but she wasn't really interested in meditation. She, was, she didn't really believe in meditation. That's not something that she did. She fell in love with a guy. Just purely fell in love with Bhagwan Rajneesh, Asha, whatever you want. Um, and she fell in love. And she would do anything he says. You know, she, she felt like she wanted to support him and she wanted to be there for him. And she felt like, she describes the feeling that if I die right now, my life is complete because I met this man. So she becomes very dedicated to him. She falls in love and she becomes his personal secretary, which means, which is a lot. Um, they set up a, a commune in Pune and it's about 700 people and then they... Then it becomes 10,000 people. They, they basically relocate to Oregon, United States. He comes here under pretenses that he's sick and he needs a visa. He's granted visa. Um, and basically, they set up a, a commune in Oregon. Uh, I'm not going to call it cold, even though I think it is a definitely cold. They didn't want to be called, called cold. But I'll tell you why. And I spoke to my to my colleague at work, Rich, and he was like, well, you know, if they wanted to give up their possessions, these were grown-up people, you know, and if he said give up your possessions and he kept it, that's his, you know, he could keep it. Like, he kept their possessions, you know, he kept their money, and... Sure Sorry, my daughter. Uh, he kept their possessions, he kept their money, and, man, like... They were growing up people. Like, if I tell you, jump off the bridge, will you jump off the bridge? You know, I get that. I get that. That's a good. That's a good point. But I think. I'm not sure I understand. But I think it's immoral, right? So if I say you should live with no possessions, so so give them up. Give them up to me. And I'll keep them, you know. So he was very much interested in money. And when she said, like, 
when she would meet with him, she became his spokesperson because he took a vow of silence. He stopped talking to his followers completely. They, they worshiped him. And when she would meet him at night, he asked her, who are the donors? How much they donated? How much money we have? Meditators or people that felt enlightened, they come last. The most important part is money, donors, how much they donated. And the people who donated a lot of money, he proclaimed them enlightened. Um, so he, it was a scam, I think. No, it was a business. I guess it is a business. Um, religion is a business. Um, so she, this woman, you know, she would do anything and then eventually she started poisoning people and she started like trying to kill people. And I think he was saying like, oh, that's not me, that's her. He, he basically told, told people that she was a fascist, you know, and she, she did it out of her own will. But I don't think that's true. I think he knew, in fact, he, he was pushing her. He's like, Sheila, go out, be provocative, uh, you know, in the media so we can make more money. So he was pushing her to do all this stuff. He was pushing her to be provocative and controversial, to attract attention, to sell more books, to make more money, to attract Hollywood. She followed his steps, everything. I think she followed him. The only thing I think that she did out of her own will is when she was trying to poison his girlfriend because eventually uh, he attracted very wealthy people and eventually he became kind of like friends with Hollywood, like the it Hollywood. So maybe if it was in our times, he would be friends with Justin Bieber or like Nicki Minaj and these people were like giving him money and they were hanging out with him and he had a girlfriend. She came from like a rich family and... Sheila was not anymore as close, like, because these are the people that donated the most money. These are the, the, the cream of the crop, you know, the cream of the society. So she became jealous, and I think she was trying to poison, you know, to kill his girlfriend or whatever. That, that I believe, but I think everything else, the poisoning of Salmonella and trying to create a controversy and the guns, the own, own, owning guns, I think it did come from him. I recommend this documentary a lot. I'm sorry for this video. I'm sorry it's not as, I don't know, you know, I'm a single mom, as you know, and I just, uh, but I want to make it while it's hot. You know, I know this topic is very, very hot. Great movie. Um, it's very dangerous to be part of the commune or cult, and I understand why people want to be part of it, because... There's a sense in all of us, in all of us, we're all searching for meaning. We're all searching for a missing piece. We all want to feel love. We all want to feel connected, belonging. We want to feel like I matter. My, I matter. It doesn't matter how much money I make. My life matters and somebody really cares about me. This connectedness, this contribution to the world, to the society, feeling like you're an important, feeling like there is a meaning, you know, that, that your suffering has a meaning, your happiness has a meaning, and everybody is searching, and his followers, like, were very interesting. So one woman, you know, she saw in movies marriage and family and happiness, and then when she married, she's like, it wasn't like in the movies. We had arguments, and we had a baby, and it wasn't like forever, ever, you know, happy forever after. It wasn't like as romantic as the movies, and she felt empty and she followed she traveled to india to to kind of yeah she wanted to transcend herself you know not just be like a i guess not just be like a everybody else like everybody feels like you know this is one life and i am unique and i it's scary you know it's scary to face your own mortality it's scary to face yeah i'm ordinary i'm gonna die and and maybe my love life is not what I saw in the movies, it's not as romantic, it's not as great, and maybe my life is not as great when I saw in the movies, and I'm not a hero, and I'm not a Jesus Christ, and I'm not a superhero, you know, it's, it's, it's very scary, you know, especially when you're getting old. Um, and the other follower was a successful lawyer, but he felt like after he divorced, he felt like, what is it for? Like, I, I don't understand, okay, I'm successful, I'm, you know, but I come home, I, you know, I eat, that, like, 
what's the point of this, you know, so he, he didn't know. Um, and then another person, um, and, but basically, you know, students or people, people that they wanted to come to somebody's feet and somebody tell them the answer, you know, here's the meaning of life. Here's why you're here. Here's what, what's, what is your path, you know? So I understand the followers and I, believe me, uh, very much I want to follow. Um, I befriended two Mormon girls. I always talk about them, the wonderful girls and they preach, you know, they preach to me about God and I want to believe it so much because I want to be part of the church. I want to be part of the community. Um, I want to be part of something. And but then I'm questioning like, well, but is this real? Is this, is this, is this true? Is this, you know, does it make sense to me? So my brain kicks in at some point and I start questioning things and I can't completely lose myself in it. And so I am alone. You know, I don't belong to this church, don't belong to that church, I don't belong to this community or to that community. So in a way, when you think for yourself, you kind of like isolate it. Um, and you isolate it. And it's scary, you know, so... I understand being a part of part of something. So, you know, they, they, they followed him and I'm sure, you know, that he's a smart man, this Bhagwan Rajneesh, you know, he speaks interesting, he has interesting thoughts and everything. But this belief that this one man has an answer or God has an answer or God will save you, it's almost like a way out because it's much harder to I don't know what my daughter's doing. Um, it's much harder to kind of, again, face your own mortality and face that there are no precise answers and it's hard and, and you have to search and you have to suffer and you have to go out there and slay the dragon. And it, it, sometimes you have to face that and it's hard. It's hard. It's it's definitely much easier just to escape into this commune or in this where people love you and understand you and you don't have to go out in the real world. You don't have to fight with people that don't understand you and people that don't love you and you have to fight for your for your place on earth with the world because there are many other people. If you're talented, there's somebody else who's more talented. And if you, you know, we're in a commune, it's like you accept it, you know, so it's, I understand why people follow. I understand why it's great to be part of something. I understand why he attracted people. I do. But I do think that he's a charlatan. And so is Sheila. And... She did it because she loved him. He did it because he wanted to make money. Meditation was the product. And this is how you make money. It's a business. And this is how you live luxurious lifestyle by selling a dream um, to people and they buy it. And um, so I guess what I'm trying to say, like, you could be part of the movement, but always think for yourself think um, even Osho Bhagwan he's just human he yeah he could be smart he could be charismatic but he has he also his thoughts as good as your thoughts you know maybe they, they sound better they're more romantic and but in other words he doesn't know more than you do he doesn't know if there's a life after death <laughs> He doesn't know. He doesn't know if there's God. He doesn't have more knowledge than you and I. That's my point. He's not somebody who is enlightened by God and you and I are not, not enlightened. We're all in the same boat. We all die and we're all human. And 
Nobody has more answers. We can get answers through studying, but nobody has access to, like, you know, where God says, I, I'm going to tell you the answer, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to save you from the plane crash, but I'm not going to save you. That is not true. Thank you so much for watching.